Our last presentation uh, is titled Laparoscopic Sleeve Gastrectomy in Patients with BMI 30 to 35. Uh, this is going to be presented by Dr. Barry. Thank you, Sages, for this opportunity. I'm Marcos Berry from Clinical Las Condes, Santiago, Chile. We're going to share our experience with the sleeve gastrectomy in patients with BMI 3035. This is my disclosure. Laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is a bariatric procedure that has been extended to special cases with BMI under 35. The real benefit is under investigation, but previous studies have shown beneficial results and safety. We try to demonstrate that laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy ca can be performed safely in patients with BMI 3035, obtaining comparable results to severe and morbidly obese patients with a resolution of their comorbidities. Uh, this procedure has become the most widespread procedure in our country and probably in Latin America, and also here in the U.S. is gaining popularity with excellent results and weight loss in weight loss and acceptable morbid mortality. This is a prospective study. We analyzed 474 patients uh, from a universe of 1,600 over a period of uh, eight years. We analyze gender, age, comorbidities, pre-op BMI, excess weight loss, and BMI post-op, including morbidity and mortality. These are our results. As you can see, the pre-op BMI was 33.5. At 24 months, we obtained a BMI of 27, and 36 months remain steady at 27. At one year, we have about 85% of excess weight loss, two years, 75%. The mean weight of uh, our population uh, of patients was uh, near, to, near uh, 90 kilograms, with a surgical time average 86 minutes. This is uh, probably the most important slide of our presentation. You can see there the uh, number of comorbidities per pay for all the patients and the remission rate. Uh, they have, for insulin resistance and dyslipidemia, they have over 90% of re remission. For fatty liver disease and hypertension, you can see a 70% remission uh, rate. Uh, for sleep apnea, 72%. And on the last one, you can see type 2 diabetes. Uh, we had a 7% patients with diabetes in this group. Of those, 82% had remission, and 18% had improvement, improvement of the type 2 diabetes. This is uh, morbidity, uh, five cases with a hemoperitoneum managed non-operatively, one portal vein thrombosis, one case, we had one bile peritonitis that required reoperation. Uh, re this was a combined surgery with a lab cole, and no leaks in this group. With a total cases of seven, 1.4% of morbidity. So in conclusion, we can say that clearly BMI is not the only indicator to consider bariatric and metabolic surgery. There are other variables to consider in a complete pre-op evaluation. Uh, we think that our results have shown that performing laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy in patients with BMI 3035 is safe. The results are comparable or even better than those obtained in patients with severe or morbid obesity in terms of resolution of comorbidities and weight loss. Of course, it will require further studies and longer follow-up. Thanks for your attention. Questions from the audience? So what strikes me the most about your data is that you have what I think many of us would probably consider a relatively small drop in their BMI, six points. We're going from 33 to 27, but yet very high rates of resolution of comorbidities. So I guess my question to you is, do you think it's too much to conclude that earlier intervention for weight-related comorbidities uh, yields a better result? 
in terms of resolution of those comorbidities, and should that ultimately be our argument for lowering the threshold? Absolutely. I think that in this group, we have a population that is similar to the Asian population in terms that we have a higher rate of comorbidities with lower BMIs. So in Chile, we do not have the, the indication to operate only BMI over 35. So between 30 and 35 and more than two comorbidities, we go ahead and we operate. And in those patients, we can see the impact. That is very relevant. And they are uh, disease-free, most of them, after two years. And that's uh, the reason to operate them. Now, the six points is for two years and three years. A one year is come down to 25 the BMI. So it's uh, about uh, eight points. But I show a longer follow-up for those. I see. Now, do you require these patients in this group to have at least two comorbidities yes. or one comorbidity? At enough? least one, two comorbidities and failure of medical treatment for at least one year. So I have a question from the audience. I've seen portal vein thrombosis reported previously with sleeve. What do you think the cause is? No one knows, but we have, this is one case in this group for uh, higher BMIs. We had another four cases of those 1,600. And uh, I think the main issue is to uh, good uh, hydration post-op. And uh, we are keeping now patients uh, with BMI over 40 with uh, low, uh, molecular heparin after post-op for 10 days at least, and that has decreased a lot the portal vein thrombosis. But I think it's a combination of not a good uh, IV fluid uh, re replacement, and also the combination of uh, you are working very close to the gastroepiploic. I think that's something mechanical with the ligature, with the energy that you apply close to those veins. And compressing the left lobe of the liver with your retractor. Right. Um, so, um, you know, there are a lot of these new endoluminal treatments for weight loss coming, coming out. I don't know if they're available in, in Central America, like the endo barrier. South or, America. Or, oh, I'm sorry, where are you? Chile. Chile. Oh, excuse me. Um, but, uh, you know, the balloon and the endo barrier. Um, and those in the studies that they've been presenting have similar weight loss. Do you think that those should be considered as alternatives in this BMI population, or you still think the sleeve the operation is the better choice. I am an endoscopist too, so I place both balloons and endobarriers, so I'm familiar with those. We do not use those, I mean balloons, we do not use it for uh, obesity, only for overweight patients. Uh, and it's only for cosmetic reasons where they're using that. Up to 15 kilograms of overweight is excellent. For obese, the patients are gonna lose time and money. And uh, for endobarrier, we were doing that, but the now it's on hold because of a higher report of hepatic abscess. So we're not doing that anymore for now. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that data. Any other questions? Okay, with that, we conclude this session. Thank you, Thank you all for coming. <laughs>